my whole career, my, my, my emphasis in neurosurgery is to try to find ways to take people who have problems like epilepsy and hydrocephalus and congenital problems and a lot of other things and make their brains work better. And to understand how to make the brain work better, if you really become a technician, a repair person of this important organ, you have to understand it very well. And doing epilepsy surgery has been one of the ways that I think we've been able to help understand the brain better. In the day-to-day -day world of neurosurgery, we have just a few things that we consider to be really important functions, and the rest of the brain is sometimes called ineloquent brain. Like there's eloquent brain that does language and motor, and if there's other areas of the brain, that's, it, it may be kind of expendable. And probably that's not a full view of the brain. I mean, I think that in, in 100 years we'll see things differently. We'll understand the networks better. We'll understand the dynamics better. We need to be understanding that better all the time. It's an interesting uh, uh, statement that you only use 10% of your brain or something like that. People come in and, and uh, uh, say that, uh, you know, hoping that the part I'm going to take out is one of the other other parts of the brain that is, uh, is, is, is one of the, one part of the 90% you don't use. It's not really true you don't use that you only use 10% of your brain. Because that, that can't be true. It can't be that you have all of this uh, uh, marvelous structure uh, that isn't doing anything. It's doing something in a, in a way that's a little bit harder to understand. It's a network, and the, how the network works together is something that, that we have a little bit of trouble figuring out. The networks that are involved in epilepsy are of great interest. Uh, it isn't just one neuron that gets going wrong and, and spreads a, an influence to other neurons. Somehow neurons get firing in a lockstep way that makes it so they are no longer able to process information. And that's why if somebody starts having a seizure, they lose function. And it's the loss of function that's really interesting. This is what may, or it, that's really dangerous to the person. This is why they can lose consciousness. This is why they might fall down to, onto the ground. This is what we're trying to stop. So sometimes, if we remove an area of the brain, in fact, most of the time, we hope when we're doing epilepsy surgery, we're actually improving the function of the brain overall. It's not just that we're removing a part that the person is, quotes, not using. If we can, if, if we, if we can do it just right, we may be able to make their memory better. We may be able to make their, their, their language abilities better. We hope they can do better in school. For some of them, we hope they can drive someday. And those are all you know, very important things that we're that we're trying to accomplish. But we need to understand all of the all of the good functional tissue as well. And so this idea that the brain is a large enchanted loom, it's a big network that's very hard to understand, is uh, is really key to how we plan and think about epilepsy surgery.